coach Matt Painter and at least two student athletes from Purdue will join us here in the main interview room. The remaining student athletes from Purdue will be available in the locker room. The open locker room session is scheduled for 30 minutes. We'll have a news conference here. The format's similar to Saturday night. The head coach makes an opening statement. We'll take questions for the student athletes for a period of five minutes. They'll go back to the locker room and join the rest of their teammates. The head coach will remain here between seven and eight minutes longer, and then we will wrap that up. The open locker room will probably still be going on at that time. Following Purdue's appearance, the national champion Yukon Huskies will make an appearance here in the main interview room. Their locker room will be open for a minimum of 30 minutes. Head coach Dan Hurley will be here in addition to two student athletes from Yukon, maybe more, a minimum of two. Yukon's locker room will be similarly open for a minimum of 30 minutes. And it'll probably still be open by the time we wrap with Yukon here in the main interview room. I'll keep you updated as to which student athletes are joining for both teams, and I'll try to keep you updated on when locker rooms are opening, and then we'll have a sense as to when they'll close because it's a 30-minute period. Hey, DT, do we have box scores in the back there? Katha Quinn Award winner, Doug Tamaro, do we have box scores in the back there? Here he is with the box scores. So what, this is what makes an award winner, folks. The Katha Quinn Award winner. Can I have some for the uh, student athletes and coach? Thank you. I'll let you know. Thank you for the bare minimum box scores, Doug. We appreciate that. We'll, we'll use our electronic devices to look up anything else that we need up here. We can do that on a dime. No problem. Yeah, watch me throw out runners for my niece tonight from the crouch. If you want to make sure you're not called on for a question, sit in the way back of each section.
passing out the all tournament team right now. All tournament team features Purdue's Zach Eady from UConn, Tristan Newton, Stefan Castle, and Donovan Klingen. In addition to Cam Spencer, Tristan Newton is your most outstanding player at the Final Four. While we're awaiting Purdue's arrival, this reminder to silence your cell phone. No flash photography here in the main interview room. We'll let you know when the locker room opens. That's when Coach Painter and the student athletes start making their way toward us. It'll be open for a 30-minute period. We'll also try to let you know when UConn opens as well. No video recording or going live during these news conferences this evening. No video recording at all, including handheld cameras, mini cameras, phone cameras, camera phones, etc. We'll have Transcripts available from this news conference almost immediately after it, and video is available to download as well as the live video going out via satellite and YouTube. From Purdue, the student athletes are going to be Zach Eady and Braden Smith. That's Braden on the outside. So when Coach Painter arrives, he'll be with Zach Eady and Braden Smith. When he leaves the locker room, the Purdue locker room will be open for the remaining Purdue student-athletes availability session. That's a 30-minute session in the open locker room.
Oh, thank you. Is he coming? Why not? Purdue is en route to the main interview room. That means that the Purdue locker room is now open for a period of 30 minutes, about 8.51 to 9.21. We're joined now by Purdue head coach Matt Painter and Purdue student athletes Zach Eady and Braden Smith. We'll ask Coach Painter to open things up with a statement. Yeah, I uh, want to congratulate uh, UConn um, on the win. I thought they um, had some separation there in the first half. At the end, that we had a couple plays where they made some tough shots. We had some shots at the rim, and it just kind of push that lead to six right there and we needed a you know kind of a break to keep that even but I thought the difference I thought it, uh, our guys really gave good effort and energy defensively in guarding them and I thought that the real difference ended up being their ability to offensive rebound in the second half we just were wasting so much energy to fight once they got it to double digits and then we would get stops and we couldn't get rebounds and that was just really hard for us to overcome at that time they did a great job of staying home and then you know we were going to go to the well with zach as much as we could at that point but you know you in the game like this we had to be able to rebound defensively better and then we, we had to have something balance that out and that was her threes, and they just stayed home with us. They did a really good job defensively. Um, you know, they, they get a lot of credit, and Donovan Klingon's a very good defensive player. But we've played against athletes, you know, and, and played against some really good defensive guys this year and in the tournament, but not the collection of defensive players like UConn has. You know, we, we'd play against somebody, and they'd have a lockdown defender. These guys are bringing lockdown defenders off the bench. And, um, you know, defense always travels. And, um, you know, tip the hat to them. They were great. Danny's done a fabulous job. Obviously, they won back-to-back -back national championships. And uh, congratulations uh, to UConn. We're going to take questions for the Purdue student athletes first. If you have a question for Zach or Braden, let's start on the right side. Myron. Matt, obviously, Zach has been able to carry this team in back-to-back -back years. How do you think he should be remembered uh, as one of the greats in the collegiate game at his position. Is that for me? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, well, uh, you know, when you look at a lot of things, I think the separator normally comes to how successful somebody was, right? And so it's hard for me to, to look at things, but when you look at his numbers against the greats, he, there's no question he's in the conversation but he's also the winningest player at Purdue. And, you know, we won our league back-to-back -back years by multiple games 
first time that's happened in the Big Ten since I was in kindergarten. Um, we got to the championship game after having a disappointing loss. He got to a Sweet 16. He went to four tournaments. Um, so I, I think that's always what kind of separates. Everybody wants to have the argument about a GOAT, right? Who's the greatest and who's this? And that's the ultimate separator because every person in that conversation is great. You know, I think he was great in how he did it too. And so people have no idea the burden that you carry when you're as good as he is and you produce like he is going into opposing arenas and the stuff you hear. But those guys, a lot of those old timers, they didn't have to hear it on social media. They didn't have, for young people that are successful, they, they have to go through a lot of stuff. And, um, but in a way you kind of like it because it, it toughens you up and it allows you to focus and it allows you to, to push through things. I just told him in the locker room, like, you're not gonna go on in life and push past here and not deal with adversity. In the workforce, in relationships, everything. You know, you're going to deal with adversity and he was superior dealing with adversity. You know, he was a guy that didn't get recruited. And then all of a sudden he started to get recruited and then that picked up and that get, you know, got him on edge and all the great ones stay on edge. And uh, I think he's gonna be a terrific NBA player and we're really proud of him. Questions only for the Purdue student athletes. We'll do questions with Coach Painter in a few moments. On the right. Chris Hagan, Fox 59, Indianapolis, Braden. It was a nice bounce back game for you. You hit the team's only three pointer. You guys only tried seven on the night, which is unusual. What were they doing specifically to make it so difficult to get looks? Yeah, they just did a really good job um, guarding the three. And we got in the paint plenty of times. We just didn't convert on a lot of them. Um, so I thought we did our job pretty well. I mean, they also did their job pretty well guarding the three, but we just got to convert on those in the paint. Next question is all the way in the back on the left side for Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. Zach, I know it's terribly difficult to ask you to put things in perspective right now, but you've spoken eloquently about your relationship with Coach Painter and what he's meant to you. As you sit here and kind of try to process all of this, can you put some context into what this whole experience has been for you? You're talking about like uh, in relation to Coach Paint or just in general? I don't know. It's like you said, it's tough. It's tough to think about that right now. Um, you know, paint, like I've always said, paint someone who kind of just gave me a chance. Um, I've been trying for four years to pay him back for that. Um, but he just he just came in. Like he, he believed in me when not a lot of people believed in me. Um, and he gave me the ball. Not a lot of coaches did that. Not a lot of coaches trusted me uh, in that role. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm, it's, it's tough for me to think of stuff like that right now. Up front, Aaron. Aaron Beard with the AP. <clears throat> this is for Zach as well. Kind of, obviously, you you were facing off against a guy with a lot of size and talent. They were also bringing you know defensive help a lot. Kind of, how did you think you were handling all the defensive attention you were getting, uh, especially as the lead guy that had anything going tonight? Um, I mean, it's something I've dealt with all year. Um, teams kind of game plan around around guarding the post a lot of times when they play us. Um, they did a good job um, showing kind of mixing up some defenses, playing some one on one. Um, Klingon's a great player, but I, I just got to play better. Um, this is one of those games where I, I got I can't go through stretches where I'm not effective, and I had a few of those stretches today, um, and that was that was the game. Third row on the left. Claire Hanna with TSN. This is for Zach. Zach, you clearly have had a huge impact on this program. When you reflect on where you've come in your journey. Uh, what do you hope your legacy is with the Purdue Boilermakers? I don't know. Uh, I don't think that's that's kind of for, for, the, for Purdue to decide. I'm not, I'm not going to tell my own legacy, but um, I think for me, the, the big thing is uh, you can say whatever you want about me. You can say however I play. You can say whatever, but uh, you can never say that I didn't give it my 100% every single time I stepped on the floor, every single time I went in practice, uh, and that's that's what I always hang my hat on. I kind of I came in, and I never didn't give it 100%. Final question for the student athletes from Purdue up front. Braden, what is it about Zach in the two years you spent with him that you've enjoyed the most, and what is it about Zach that you will miss the most when he leaves? Yeah, man, I, I just. 
enjoyed just playing with him. I mean, he taught me so much. Um, I went from 6'4 centers to 7'4 centers, so definitely a huge change. But just being with a guy like him, I mean, he's a two-time national player of the year, and he's the most unselfish person you'll ever meet. And like Coach Paint said, like he gets more hate than anybody for no reason. Like, like well, for what? That he's just out there dominating everybody? Like, it's just, it's just stuff like that. I mean, he's just going out there just enjoying the game that he loves. I mean, he hasn't played it for long. And just to have somebody like that that just wants to go out there and play because that's what he loves and people want to give him crap for it. So just seeing that um, makes me kind of admire him a little bit more because I realize, like, hey, you're the top of the game and you're still getting hate on just because you love the game. And then when he's gone, just, I mean, just who he is as a person. I mean, he's just a great dude, great dude. We want to congratulate Braden and Zach on a great season in the run to the title game. They're going to head back to the locker room now and join their teammates. The Purdue locker room should be open until about 9.21 p.m. Thanks, guys. If you have a question for Coach Painter, please raise your hand. We'll send a microphone stored in your direction. Let's start up front on the left. Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Coach, can you talk about the three-point uh, percentage? You guys came in one of the top teams in the country in that you didn't even get off that many shots so right. what were they doing to take that away yeah you know they were just going to let us play one-on-one -on -one in the post you see the 25 attempts that Zach had um, you know and, and so like for us we're just going to throw him the basketball and keep going and um, and just be able to keep going to the well you hope through the game and like what you do like that we could loosen that and get them. You know, when you play in the NCAA tournament and you win six games and they led for, I think, everything except six minutes now. I think it was like four minutes and 20 seconds or something. So just kind of think about that. You got to get them on their heels. And so for us to get them to change, we had to get the lead, get them on their heels, and then get, you know, in that 10 minute mark and whatever. And we, we couldn't get there. We couldn't get rebounds. We couldn't, you can't go on runs if you can't get stops. And they're, they're a great defensive team. And so they, they just made a decision, like, we can defend the perimeter and we can take this away from you, and then you're just going to get the ball to your best player, and then he's just going to be one-on-one, -on -one, and then that's that. And they, they're, they're, they were going to live with that. So if we could have rebounded the basketball better, I, you know, we could have got them to change and do that. But we just we, we weren't able to do that, and then they stayed in control of the game. So not everybody can do what they just did. You know, you have to give credit to their defense and their coach and how they're wired. Staying up front, Dennis. Matt, Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. You touched on it about the, the burden he had to go through all the crap for four years. Yeah. But there was another kind of burden, and during that, as well as getting better and carrying this team, I wonder if you could just expand on that. All of that he had to go through. Yeah. Well, I, I, it's also a back hit compliment, right? You know, the, the people like myself who average four points – no one really cares about you. Like nobody, the fans don't like pay attention to you. I always call it cartoon bad guy. You know, you ever watch the cartoons and there's the bad guy that gets all the hate and everybody's coming at him. You know, like the best player in college basketball, the best player in your conference becomes cartoon bad guy. And so like that's just, you know, it's the way it is. But it's also a back a compliment. There's, a, there's millions of basketball players out there that would love to carry that burden. Not everybody can do it. Very few get that. And, you know, he's done it, and he shows up. I always was – I'd always say, like, like, like when is he just going to have a bad game? Like, when is he just not going to show up? He, he always showed up. He always competed. He always played through physicality. He, you know, he's a very unselfish player, and I think that's the piece of it. But it's, um, it, it's, it's hard, man. It, 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 it's hard to go through – that especially in today's world because what eats up a, a young player is positive comments because then they get full of themselves and then the negative comments like you all you feel sorry for them like hey this guy doesn't deserve this or whatever so it's kind of how you look at things and how you handle things and he always stayed really professional and um you know even when they're hanging on him and, and, and fouling him and, and doing stuff throughout the year see they didn't do that at first you know, because, you know, who he is today, that's not who he was three years ago. So I always would talk about, like, he'd play 17 minutes, he'd get 12 points, he'd get six rebounds, he'd have four fouls, six turnovers, and we go to the monitor twice. And then, like, you know, and all of a sudden, six games later, like, he's not elbowing people in the head anymore. You know, he's, he's you know, he couldn't pass at one time. And then all of a sudden, he, he could pass. Well, he never got doubled, so why should he have to pass? So, like, it just... 
it's amazing the way he's grown and the way he's developed, and, and but also how he's went about it and, and the way he stayed professional. On the left side, midway back, hand the microphone right there. Thank you. Lucas Gordon, uh, Cronkite News. Uh, earlier this season, you guys played a lot of good non-conference opponents and took down the number one team at the time, Arizona and Indianapolis. Uh, did you use any of those games as a point of emphasis coming into this one since you were playing the number one team in the country once again? No, not really. Um, you know, the, the point of interest is like you play Illinois and like Terrence Shannon can really guard you. And you play Tennessee and Ziegler can really guard you. And it doesn't mean the other guys aren't great defensive players, probably good defensive players, right? And um, I'm kind of in theory here. So they just had so many good defensive players. Like uh, at every position, like those guys do a great job. They know how to play. They move without the basketball. They have experience, you know, from Tristan Newton's fifth year, Cam Spencer's fifth year, um, you know, but like Caravan and Klingon, like in their second year, they play like veterans. Like they just, they, they have a great program. They have a great system, both offensively and defensively. They're a well-oiled machine. Um, that's where they separate because they do have laws offensively if you watch them. They, they have, you know, they'll beat somebody by 25 and go three for 20 from three. You're like, well, damn. Like, you know, what if they go 12 for 20? Like, you know, but it, it kind of shows you who they are. Like, they didn't get out on us and, and really get in transition because we didn't turn the ball over, you know, as much as some other people that they've played. But they're just, you know, they're so good when they get in transition and they get those runs. Um, but the difference with them is, is, is how they are defensively. They're, they're, a very, they're, they're a better defensive team overall than all those other teams that we played, and that says something because those are some pretty good teams. In the back of the room on the right side, raise your hand for us. Thank you. Andy Dorf, uh, Sports Byline USA Radio Network. Talk about that on-the-ball pressure and how daunting it was for you guys to get in your sets right. and why it made you guys so one-dimensional. Yeah, you know, we, we were one-dimensional because of how good – you know, Zach Eady is. So we were, we were comfortable going to him, right? We were comfortable continue to do that because that's what, they're, that's what they're giving you. When a great defensive team says, okay, here's how we're going to play it, and you want to fight that and you want to take tough bad threes, bad threes are going to be runouts for them. And that's what we really talked about. We kept showing those clips. And guys, you know, you hear people say, you know, they get thirsty. You know, three-point shooters that don't get looks now start take ones that they shouldn't take. And now that for them, they're just going to go score at the other end. So that's what we were talking about. Just take what they give you. You know, if they take something away, whether it's Zach's post up, Braden's ball screen, our threes, we still can get a quality shot. You know, we had to be better on the glass, in my opinion. And then we had to be a little bit more efficient, you know, in the shots that we were getting. And that balance right there could have got us into the game. It would have got us into the game um, and, and made it a game. But we, we just simply weren't able to do that. Up front on the right side. Uh, Greg Braggs, Boilers in the Stands. Matt, last year when you guys lost to Fairleigh Dickinson, you said you had to sit in it. Now, fast forward to this year, you lose in the national championship. How is that feeling the same, or is it different, and how does it motivate you to get back to this point? Yeah. No, it's a lot different. It's obviously a lot different to get um, to the Final Four and get into the championship game. You know, it hurts because – you know, these, these opportunities are slim. You know, you, you say you're going to get back here, but, you know, you want to use this as motivation to get it back here and keep growing your program. Uh, but, no, it, it's, it's a lot different um, than, you know, last year when you put yourself in a great position and you don't take advantage of it. We put ourselves in a great position now, and we took advantage of it. We just came up a little bit short to a great team. But I told our guys in the locker room, like, you know, when you have the most wins in school history, you're the first ten team to win back-to-back -back championships by multiple games since 1976, which was the last undefeated team in college basketball. And you get, you know, an eyelash away from winning it all. Like that, you know, that's the standard. And, and so, like, now we're going to, just like any other year, we're going to take two to three weeks off, and then we're going to get back to work. And obviously it's not going to be a lot of work until, you know, the summer in terms of from a team standpoint. but you know, those guys are going to be getting into the gym and, and, and fighting and competing. And we like our young guys that are coming in next year, you know, so we're excited. 
We want to congratulate Coach Painter on his run to the championship game and thank him for spending all the time this week here in the main interview room. Thank you, Coach. Purdue locker room is open until about 9.21. We'll keep you updated on UConn and their appearance here in the main interview room. Thank you. We know players, yeah. Uncle Jesse. Huh? I have no way of telling. I'll keep that in mind. If they bring seven people, I'll move over. Or I'll stand up. Remember we did that? I know. Remember this thing where, we're, uh, where everybody gets to tell me what to do? Let's stop doing that. <laughs> Charles Barkley's leaving. No, he just left. Aren't there, there's not more games? We're going to try this again for the UConn press conference. So the coach makes an opening statement, then we take questions for the basketball players, then we're done with the basketball players, then we go back to questions for the coach. We don't ask coach a question until we're done with the questions for the basketball players. Everybody cool with that? People in the back? Thank you. Pete, you changed seats. Does that mean you're, you're going to ask a question? Is it going to be a mean question? It looks like a mean question. Based on where you're sitting, it's my 14th year doing this. I can smell the mean questions coming. You don't get the first question, but you can have one. You got it. Yeah. Including two as a participant. 
just means I'm very old at this point. What's that? A, a fruit basket or something? Or? Oh, right, yeah. I asked for a, like a snare drum guy. Didn't have the budget for it. Sounds good to me. Sunday in San Antonio? Alright. I'll explain later. It's don't yet, Zach. As soon as I do, I'll make an announcement, though. Hello. I'm sorry? They don't. I think um, talk to Bobby Mullen or talk to Phil Shardis about doing something at the hotel in the lobby. I think, uh, you know, they may send something out, but it's, it's basically on the team and their SIDs to do something from that.
Did everybody get a box score who needs one? Or is anyone still in need of a box score at this time? All right. I'm going to get my box score people on that. I'm going to reach out to, I got a guy for that. Is that boxes? Oh, Purdue quotes. Okay. Yeah, I texted Doug. Who are you putting where, Courtney? Have Spencer at the end? Yeah. Okay. Great. When UConn makes their way here to the main interview room, head coach Dan Hurley will be joined by Tristan Newton, Stefan Castle, and Cam Spencer. The Purdue locker room should be closing momentarily if it's not closed already. If you need a box score, please raise your hand. All right. The Purdue locker room is closed, and from the sounds of it, UConn players are making their way into their locker room. We call that progress. Their next stop is with us. When Coach Hurley and the UConn players make their way into the locker room, they'll have a quick meeting. They'll then make their way down here and the locker room will open for student athlete availability. That's a minimum of 30 minutes. Most of the time the national champs stay open a little bit longer. So feel free to stretch your legs, ask some questions. We'll hang out in here for a little bit with Coach Hurley and with Tristan Newton and Stefan Castle and Cam Spencer. The rest of the UConn student athletes will be available in their locker room and it'll probably go more than 30, but 30 is the minimum. And it hasn't started yet. Yeah, I think uh, anybody need a box square still? Anybody need anything? There we go.
Coach Hurley said it into the UConn locker room right now. When joining us here in the main interview room, please take a moment to silence your cell phone. Please refrain from flash photography or video recording. That includes handheld cameras, mini cameras, mobile phones, camera phones, etc. You cannot go live on social media from the main interview room during this news conference. We'll have transcripts available almost immediately after the news conference and videos available for download, as well as the live video going out over the satellite and on YouTube. When UConn arrives, said Coach Dan Hurley, we'll make an opening statement. We will then take questions only for the UConn student-athletes for five minutes. We will not take questions for Coach Hurley until after the UConn student-athletes head back to the locker room. This session and the open locker room session will be the last official UConn media availability here at the arena. For any additional UConn coverage, again, please contact Bobby Mullen and Phil Shardis, the UConn SIDs. They may be doing something tomorrow. They may not be, but it won't be here at the arena. It's the sound of progress. Congrats, Wayne. In just a few moments, we'll be joined by UConn head coach Dan Hurley and UConn players Tristan Newton, Stefan Castle, and Cam Spencer. 
when Coach Hurley makes his way in this direction. The UConn locker room will open. The locker room will be open for student-athlete interviews for a minimum of 30 minutes. We'll let you know when that officially begins. Again, minimum of 30 minutes. It's customary for the national champs to stay open a few minutes later than that. We'll work that out as the evening progresses. If you're joining us here, please take a moment to silence your cell phone. Please be reminded not to use flash photography or any video recording. Please don't go live on social media. You can take still photos, but no video. That includes with handheld cameras, mini cameras, mobile phones, camera phones, etc. When UConn arrives, we'll ask Coach Hurley to make an opening statement. Then we'll take questions for the student athletes first, players first, Tristan, Stefan, and Cam first. UConn has arrived. That means the UConn locker room is open. Let's call it 935. You know, uh... So Tristan, Stefan, and then Cam. <laughs> and coach over here.
We're joined now by student athletes from UConn. If you have a question for the student athletes from UConn, raise your hand. We'll send a microphone to you. Let's start up front here to the left. Thank you. This one is for Cam. Your name and media oh, outlet, sorry. sir. Sorry. Yep. Uh, Jake Fenner, Daily Mail. Cam, over here. Hi, Cam. Far left up front, guys. Um, the three of you were named to the uh, top team, the all-tournament team. You especially, this is something that uh, happened to you after you transferred to the school. Is that something that uh, coach kind of sold you on, those kinds of opportunities, and is that what drew you to the school? No, I mean, it was, it was all about the team and going to accomplish another championship, you know. I had never been a part of a, a championship like this, and, uh, you know, that's really what Coach Hurley and I talked about in the recruiting process. And, you know, this was our goal from day one. So to do it with, with your brothers and your family that you go to war with every day is just, you know, really special right now. Continuing with questions for the UConn student athletes, second row, Wall Street Journal. Robert O'Connell, Wall Street Journal. This one's for Cam. Uh, there was a moment there. Cam, sorry, right here in the middle. There was a moment there where uh, I think you got a foul called on you and you were maybe looking for a jump ball or something, and you were running around, and coach kind of calmed you down, kept you from maybe getting a tee or something like that. I'm curious, how often is that going in that direction and not you guys having to calm coach down about not going too nuts on the sideline? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, we're two similar personalities, but, you know, I just – I was going for the offensive rebound and felt like I had the ball and, you know, just heat of the moment reaction. Uh, but, you know, luckily I have coach to have my back and calm me down because I probably would have gotten a technical if, if I didn't uh, calm down. So, yeah. If you have a question for the UConn student athletes, please raise your hand. Let's go to the third row on the right side. Nick Lawrence, I'm a major man. It's Cam. 20, or, so you came into college, you only had one scholarship offer. You went to Loyola. Your first year, you were the first team in the whole country to get eliminated from conference tournaments. Just talk about the trials and tribulations to get here, get that win. And also, you have some nice hardware up against your brother. He's won the tour, and now you are national champion. Just talk about that with your brother, a little relationship there. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be here without, without my brother. Um, you know, having four years ahead of me, I've always been able to watch him, you know, kind of grow up and go through the similar experiences that I, I'm now going through. Um, so, you know, like I said, I wouldn't be here without him, and I'm just so thankful for all the, you know, work he's helped me put in. And, um, yeah, I, I can't say enough about my family, and, you know, I wouldn't be here without them. So, so thankful. Next question is for Adam. And, Adam, hang on to the microphone when you're done. Yeah, for all three of you guys, Adam Zagori, NJ.com, I think the UConn guards outscored the Purdue guards 55-17. to 17. How much going into the game was it your mindset to – kind of control and disrupt their guards and uh, how proud of you are the fact that you dominated them 55 to 17. Adam, pass the mic to your left and we'll ask Cam to take that, then Stefan and then Tristan. Yeah, go first, go first. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a big part of our game plan, just trying to uh, limit as much as we can from the guards and I feel like we did a good job at that. And, you know, just playing confident on the other end, I feel like coach put us in great positions to be successful all night and it worked out for us. Tristan. Yeah, I mean, uh, we knew we knew he was going to get his points, and, you know, it took him 25 shots to get 37 points. So, you know, that was the game plan, just uh, limit the guards. And, um, you know, Steph, Cam, um, you know, Haas, when he got in there, they did great jobs on the guards and, you know, limiting them and their impact. Cam, did you have something to add to that? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, coming in, we knew Zach, Zach Eady's a tough guy to stop. Uh, you know, we wanted to make him work for everything, but, you know, I think, the coaches made a point that we'd be really locked in if, you know, we could control their three-point attempts. And, you know, I think holding them to seven, uh, you know, we were really just locked in on, you know, not letting those other guys get involved in the game. Um, and I think, you know, Steph and Tristan and all the guards did a great job. In the center of the room, please raise your hand for us. Hi, Adi Hughes of uh, CBS Sports. Um, did you guys, uh, and this is for any of you, did you expect – them to back off three-pointers? Like, you, you just talked about how you defended them, but did you actually expect that they would simply not take them, that they would show that, I guess, discipline and react to how you were defending them, or was that did that come as a surprise to you? Tristan, can you take that one for us? I mean, um, we watched their film, and they get their three-pointers off, you know, people going down there and helping on Edie. Uh, you know, the coaches did a great job game planning and made sure that um, that was a focus on that. We didn't leave the three-point line and, and let Edie do all you know, his, his damage because, you know, he only shoots two, he shoots no three. So um, if he makes 15, 
twos like he did today, that's 30. And then where the rest of the points going to come from? So, you know, they, they did a great job of scouting. And, um, yeah, credit to them. If you have a question for the student athletes from UConn, please raise your hand. We'll send the microphone to you. All right, we'll take one in the back of the room on the right side. Andy Dorf, Sports Byline USA Radio Network. Talk about your guys' on-the-ball pressure, just relentless throughout the whole game and how you made it so daunting for those guys to basically get any shot up. Stefan, can you take that one, please? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like our post-defense started with, you know, pressuring the ball and just trying to limit, uh, you know, just easy easy catches for Edie. So, I mean, I, I feel like our coaches did a great job at uh, with the scout, and I feel like we executed it well, and it worked out for us. Final question for the UConn student athletes all the way right. Can't get any further right. Uh, this is Richard Smith with Independent News Media here in Phoenix. Uh, this question's for Tristan. He, something Coach talked about on Saturday was how this team never lo lost its drive. They, they didn't act like they were the, the defending champions. They kept their focus. They were hungry. How much did you take it on yourself to set that kind of tone for the team? And then when did you realize that these guys were as locked in as the team was last year, if, if not more? Was it even before the season started? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't take any credit for it. Setting the tone, you know, that was all coach. Um, you know, last year was last year. It's not uh, defending. You know, that, that trophy, 23 trophy is, is in the crib. And coach office, uh, nobody can take that from him. So, uh, you know, this is a whole different year. And we, we had goals, winning five championships. And, you know, we got all those done. So, you know, credit coach to set the tone and everybody just follows his lead. We want to congratulate Cam, Stefan, and Tristan. They're going to head back to the locker room. The UConn locker room is open till at least 10.05. And coach, we'll ask you to make an opening statement, then we'll take some questions. Yeah, uh, you, know, uh, you know, first off, you know, just uh, like I said, I think yesterday was a privilege uh, to share the court with, uh, you know, with, with, with Matt Painter and, and Purdue, uh, you know, one of the top programs in the country, one of the best coaches in the country, and uh, you know, just total class, uh, you know, class uh, personified uh, across the board with, with, with those guys. So, uh, you know, obviously, you know, what could you say? We won by a lot again. Next question is for Eddie. We're going to have to hustle to bring him a microphone. Eddie, raise your hand. Thanks, Eddie. Yes, Coach, you won by a lot again. Congrats. <laughs> um, Eddie Pels from AP. After they made their one three-pointer, you hopped off the bench and called a timeout. I know you were in quite a... A, la a lather that, <laughs> but I mean, was that specifically about like making sure we don't, this doesn't become a trend? Well, that was a, that was a late clock, a mistake. Um, uh, you know, Braden had it with three on the clock and he used the ball screen and uh, in, in such a late, you know, late shot clock situation, like Donovan needed to get up there high and eliminate the attempt. But, um, you know, just the, the game plan and, and Luke, you know, Luke for for a day and a half prep uh, to have us as ready as he did uh, defensively for that game was just impressive. We, we obviously, you know, we, we didn't want to give up threes. We we didn't care if Zach, uh, you know, took 25, 28 shots to get 30, 35 points. The, the, this whole game plan was like, no Smith, no Lawyer, uh, no Gillis, no Jones. You know, keep that collective group under 18, 20 points as a group. They had no chance to win no matter how well Zach played. Up front, Pete. Uh, Dan, Pete Thamel from ESPN. Uh, you won your six games in this tournament by 140 points. That's more than any team. You really haven't backed away as you've dominated through this, t speaking of your dominance. So I'm just curious, do you feel like this is a historic team and do you feel like this is one of the greatest teams of all time? Um, I, th I think it's I think it's up there in terms of the greatest two-year runs that a program's maybe ever had, just because, um, you know, I don't want to, <laughs> I, I guess, I can't say anything about Duke because I'm going to piss my brother off. Um, 
but I guess I could say stuff about Florida. <laughs> but I love Billy Donovan, so I'm in a bad spot. Um, I just think it, 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 it's, it's the best two-year run, I think, in a very, very long time, just because uh, of everything we lost from last year's team. Um, to lose that much and, and uh, again, to do what we did again, uh, you know, it, it's got to be as, two, uh, as, as, as impressive a two-year run as a program's had uh, since prior to whoever did it before Duke. Um, to me, it is more impressive than what Florida and Duke did. Um, b because they brought back their entire teams, and you know we, we uh, you know we lost <laughs> we lost some major players. To the left of the aisle, coach Field of 68. Dan Mike Miller, Field of 68. I'll give you an opening afterward. Jay Wright said it was the most dominant team he can remember, so that gives you a chance there. Does that is that what you're going to be making your mark on? Dominance, nothing but dominance. Is that going to be the standard going forward? Is it a standard you can reach every year? Yeah, um, you know, I know, you know, things are going to be a little crazy for the next 10 days. Um, unfortunately, you know, we're, we're going to head into the portal. Um, like everybody else now, I've been dreading this moment. Uh, <laughs> but now we're here. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll enjoy this for a couple of days. But then, um, you know, we're going to, you know, on the flight home tomorrow, we'll start talking about, you know, what the roster is going to look like. Obviously, we graduate some players. We're going to lose a couple potentially to the NBA early entry. And, and uh, you know, we're going to dive in and, and, and put together a roster that, 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 that will, can play a comparable level of basketball uh, to the one that you guys have witnessed the last two years. That's, I know, what our mindset will be. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to be focusing on trying to put together, you know, a, a three-year run, not just a two-year run. Front row on the left side, Coach. Hi, Coach. Jake Fenner, Daily Mail. Um, to piggyback off of a previous question, to accomplish this feat in this era of the NIL and the transfer portal, it almost could be considered something entirely different and entirely particularly special with the way the landscape currently is. Do you think that winning two in a row in this era is something that could be replicated again? And do you think that because you won in this era, it deserves to be held in a different regard? Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably for you guys to decide. I think, you know, it's obviously it's a special run. Um, and, yeah, I mean, shit, we're, we're going to try and replicate it again. <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to maintain a championship culture. Uh, we, we brought in, we're bringing in some very talented high school freshmen. Uh, our returning players through player development will take a big jump. And then we'll strategically add through the portal. So um, yeah, I don't think that, that we're going anywhere. Front row, left. Brett Friedlander, SaturdayRoad.com. Dan, you mentioned your brother. Uh, he, he won back-to-back -back titles as a player. You've done it as a coach now. And could you put in perspective how incredible that is that two guys in the same family have done this? <laughs> and you know, what does it mean to your family? Yeah, it's incredible. I think uh, you know, it's, it's incredible uh, to join Bob in that club. You know, and it just uh, you know, Bob was in the arena tonight. He wanted to kind of stay out of the out of the camera lens, so it was you know he was in a he was in a box, <laughs> uh, you know, enjoying uh, you know the comfort of that tonight. So it was just awesome to have him here for that. And then obviously my dad, you know, it's like my dad. I think he looks at me and he looks at my brother and he sees us coaching in college and what would, what it would have looked like you know for him if if he was doing it. Um, you know, so I know it means a lot to me and Bob to. You know, to again, you know, we're the version of my father that would be coaching in college. We're even after back to back for me, I'm still just a worse version of him. Up front on the left side, a little bit worse. Slightly I'm worse. getting better <laughs> and I'm coming for him. Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. We've asked you about the potential to repeat. Now that you've done it, Dan, does this feel different? It doesn't. It really doesn't. Um, I mean, it, it's the same, you know, feeling that, that you have. You know, you you just feel so light right now. Um, and, and you know what, though? Maybe it feels a little bit better because it's like the last thing, knowing how great this team's been, we've taken, you know, you know we, we've worn the everything shirt the whole year. Um, 
And we just, everyone in this organization gave everything so that we could win everything this year. You know, the MTE that we were in, the Big East regular season, the Big East tournament, the regional and, and, and the national championship. So we wanted to give everything so that we could win absolutely everything. And the thought of like Cam Spencer and Steph Castle in, in their, their short window of time with us, um, not to experience a national championship like we all have felt. You know, once we realized how good the team was, that became a little bit of a pressure point. You know, it would have, been, it would have sucked today to have, you know, blue and, blue and yellow confetti, uh, and we'll have to walk off that court with Cam Spencer and Steph Castle. Likely the final question on the left side, left of the aisle, Dan. Dan Walken, USA Today. Uh, Dan, I, I hope I don't misquote you, but you said out on the court something about UConn giving you all the resources you need. Um, can we interpret that to mean you intend to be back at UConn next year? You're not going to entertain any conversations <laughs> with anybody else that might have a job coming open tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think that's a concern. <laughs> you know, my wife, uh, you should have her answer that. <laughs> yeah. We can maybe arrange a press conference for Mrs. Hurley in the morning. Congratulations, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, she'll, she'll answer that question better than I can. Yeah, shit. <laughs> We'd, we'd like yeah, to congratulate Coach and thank him for all the time he spent here in the keep, main interview room all week. Not a lot of mobility on Zagoria. <laughs> Whoa! I almost hit the trophy, man. <laughs> Later. Thank you, Coach, and thank you, everyone. The UConn locker room should still be open right now for player availability and anything else UConn wants to do. You got it. Thank you, everybody. We've had a great week here in the main interview room. I appreciated everybody's patience and everybody's time, and we'll see you next year in San Antonio. It is San Antonio, right?